Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a switchgear lineup. Notice that the secondary of the transformer is still red. Okay, so we don't know what the voltage on that is. And that's okay. We're just going to keep connecting equipment. I'm going to grab a low voltage breaker and I'm just going to bring it down. I'm going to left mouse click and it snaps in. Now a volt, uh, low voltage breaker or any type of breaker does not have any voltage um, uh, fields in it. So it does not, um, you know, terminate this the secondary of the transformer. We need to do that with a bus. So I'm going to go up and grab a uh, low voltage bus. In this case it will it's it will turn low voltage when I left mouse click and snap it in. It's going to come up and say 480. That's the default we have it set for right now. And when I do that there's our low voltage bus. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to left mouse click and stretch this out as we did before. Then I'm going to go up and grab several low voltage breakers and I'm just going to left mouse click snapping those in. I'm going to go up and grab a conductor. Here's an insulated conductor. Now previously we left mouse click hold it down, drag and release. You can also just left mouse click and it will snap into a predetermined length. And then what I can do is I can go up and grab a motor control center and maybe several panels and there in about a dozen mouse clicks is a typical unit substation that you would see in just about any industrial or commercial system. Now there's a little button up on the toolbar um, which is undo. I'm going to undo this and we're going to show you an easier way to create a low voltage switchgear lineup. So I'm going to hit undo and we're going to go backwards a little bit. This undo works great if you happen to accidentally erase something. Um, the third button from the left on the toolbar is called a low voltage switchgear lineup and once again the tool tips are not showing up in the recording mode. Um, but I'm going to grab a low voltage switchgear lineup. Now I could snap it on just like I did a low voltage breaker but I'm going to bring it down a little ways so you can see how we connect separate systems here in a second. So I'm going to left mouse click. It's going to say insert a low voltage switchgear lineup. And there's um, three different types of equipment lineups you can insert. Switchgear, switchboard, or panel board. Now all three are different um, because they have different um, arc flash, how should I say, arc gaps. Um, built in per the IEEE 1584 standard. They also, we separate these out because switchgear, switchboard, and panel board have different design requirements when we're doing our automated design process. And that is why um, we uh, have these different functions available. Now, we have a default setting right now of 480 volts, but you can change that to 475 or whatever your um, system is if you're in Canada and not North America. Um, or 208 if you're designing uh, 208 volt systems. Um, disconnect type, low voltage power circuit breakers, insulated case or molded case breakers are available. Um, you can have fused combinations such as a fused low voltage power circuit breaker, insulated case, molded case, or just fused switches. I'm going to choose a low voltage power circuit breaker. I like switch gear for typical um, arc flash hazard protection. Um, I'm going to include a main it will ask how many feeders you choose. I'm going to tell it I want six feeders. It's going to say do you want a default line type connected to those feeders and I'm going to say sure I'd like insulated conductors but I could have busways or transmission lines also. I'm going to say insulated conductors and then it will come on and say do you want a default load type connected to that. And um, there's several options motors, loads, MCCs or panels. I'm going to choose MCCs. Now when I say OK it's going to create this lineup for me. Here's the lineup and now you can see we have our transformer which is non-terminated showing up in red and we have a terminated 480 volt system with six motor control centers um, down below. Now the question is, is how do you connect a non-terminated system to a terminated system? Well it's very easily. You can just left mouse click, drag it down when you get the red portion somewhere near this breaker, release the left mouse click and it snaps in. So there's our um, low voltage unit substation in about five mouse clicks. 
Now remember, all we've done is left mouse click, so it doesn't get much easier than this um, in creating a one-line diagram. Anybody can do that. Now, if we want to add a primary fuse, all I do is go up and grab a primary fuse switch, left mouse click. I don't have to break it. I can just left mouse click and snap it in. If I wanted to get rid of this primary bus, I can just um, snap it in as a node. Now, um, there's a typical Windows command. It's called left mouse click, press slide release. So I'm going to use that right here. I'm going to say we don't need six motor control centers. We need three motor control centers and three panels. So the wizard um, gives you a lot of options. We didn't want to clutter it up with too many more. So you can just create with motor control centers or panels. I left mouse click, press slide release. That highlights all three motor control centers. I hit the delete key. Select yes. It automatically deletes those. Now I can go up, grab my panels, snap in a panel, and there in a couple mouse clicks is my unit substation. Now a couple things we want to go over. This is a bus. A bus terminates a branch impedance. Now since these conductors are branch impedances, that means these motor control centers and panels are also a bus. And you can see that very easily with the diagonal voltage there. So now we can calculate our branch flows through this impedance down to the motor control centers and so on. And because these are buses, it also means we can grab an insulated conductor. We can left mouse click on a motor control center or a panel, grab a conductor, take a, another motor control center, left mouse click, snap it in, and there is a daisy chain motor control center from an internal bucket which we can define in detail what this breaker is so we can calculate our arc flash hazards at this motor control center also. Or I can grab a panel and here is a uh, daisy chained panel from another lighting panel. I can also grab a transformer. I'll go up and grab a transformer, left mouse click, snap it in, go up and grab another panel. When I click on this, it's going to say what voltage um, because it doesn't have a voltage on the secondary yet. So I'll say 208 volts. And here is a lighting transformer and um, lighting panel. Now I could have placed the conductors in here, but I didn't take the time to do that because I want to keep the video a little bit shorter. But you saw how we uh, did conductors. So there, in just a few easy mouse clicks, is a complete unit substation, three motor control centers, plus a, a sub feed, and multiple panels.